This is English for Grade 7. Produced by Tigray Education Bureau. Transmitted by Dimsuoyane Tigray National and FM radio satellites and social media. And also FM Makala 104.4. English Grade 7, Program 1. Unit 8, How Does It Work? Lesson Topic, Conditionals and Compound Sentences. Okay, students, let me remind you about active and passive voice from the last hour classes. Active is said to be the subject of the door of the action in active sentence or performed an activity or an action on the object of the sentence. Passive is also said to be the receiver of the action in the active, but in passive, the subject is the object of the active one. Example, one, Barakat repairs the computer, active. When we want to change this active sentence, the object of the active comes at the place of the subject and the subject comes at the place of the object. So, the computer is repaired by him. 2. Avinet switches on the machine. The object is the machine. The machine is switched on by him. Now, let's proceed to the daily lesson, conditionals and compound sentences. Section A, conditional sentences. Okay, students, how many conditional sentences do you know? All right, there are three conditionals. These are one, probable condition or likely. Two, Improbable condition or unlikely. 3. Impossible condition or rejected. Now let's proceed and see them one by one, students. 1. Probable condition or likely. In this sentence, there are two clauses the if clause and the main clause. Example 1. If you start the machine, it will make noise. 2. If you study hard, you will pass your exams. In these two sentences, the if clause is present simple tense, and the main clause is simple feature, because the if clause is formed with subject plus verb 1. And followed by the main clause, subject plus will plus verb 1. This form is used for all subjects because will is a modal auxiliary verb. 2. Improbable condition. This conditional also has two clauses, the if clause and the main clause. But there is a little difference with the probable condition because unlikely conditional sentence in the if clause is past the simple tense and in the main clause is future conditional. Example 1. If you pressed the button, the machine will start working. 2. If you had enough money, you would buy a villa house. These two examples have the same form or pattern that is subject plus verb 2 in if clause and subject plus would plus verb 1 in the main clause. 3. Impossible condition or rejected. This conditional sentence also has similarity with the likely 
and unlikely conditions. This conditional is also formed with past perfect tense in its if clause and perfect conditional in its main clause. Example 1. If I had studied hard, I would have passed my exams. Students, you are reminded not to be that when we start the sentences with each conditional sentence of if clause, the two clauses must be separated by a comma. And when we start the sentence with the main clause, no need of comma to separate the two clauses because the word if is used as a conjunction of the two sentences. Example 1. If you press the button, you will turn on the machine. 2. You will turn on the machine if you press the button. Question is based on the above conditional sentences. Okay, students, choose the correct alternative from the given choices. Question number one. If you dash enough money, you will buy a villa house. A. Get. B. Got. C. Getting. D. Will get. I will repeat it again, students. If you dash enough money, you will buy a villa house. A. Get. B. Got. C. Getting. D. Will get. The correct answer is A. Get. If you get enough money, you will buy a villa house. Question number two. If you wash your hands with pure water and soap, you dash a coronavirus. A. Protect. B. Would protect it. C. Will protect. D. Protecting. If you wash your hands with pure water and soap, you dash a coronavirus. A. Protected. B. Will protect it. C. Will protect. D. Protecting. The correct answer is C, will protect. If you wash your hands with pure water and soap, you will protect a coronavirus. Question number three. If I studied hard, I dash my exams. A, will pass. B, would pass. C, will passing. D, Pass it. If I studied hard, I dash my exams. A will pass. B would pass. C will passing. D pass it. The correct answer is B would pass. If I studied hard, I would pass my exams. Question number four. If I had had a new car, I dash to Aksum to visit the obelisk. A would go. B would have gone. C would going. D will be went. If I had had a new car, 
I dash to Aksum to visit the obelisk. A would go. B would have gone. C would going. D will be went. The correct answer is B would have gone. If I had had a new car, I would have gone to Aksum to visit the obelisk. Students, let's proceed to the second section. Section B, compound sentence. Students, do you remember what compound sentence is from your grade 6 textbook, Unit 7, Lesson 7, page 120? All right. Compound sentence is a sentence that contains two or more clauses and has to comprise or join two independent clauses that are joined together with coordinating conjunctions. And we are going to see the subordinate conjunction because in this section. So there are different coordinating conjunctions listed below with their definitions. For is used to show reason and is used to show similar ideas, nor is used to show negative idea, but is used to show or to contrast opposite ideas, or is used to show alternatives or choices, yet is used as a despite or nevertheless, so is used to show result or effect clauses. So now we are going to focus on and, but, or, and the subordinating conjunction because. Okay students, would you try to construct sentences using the above conjunctions? Thank you students. Now let's see together. One. Berha plays netball. Berha swims very fast. When we join these two sentences using coordinating conjunction, Berha plays netball and swims very fast. 2. I went to Macho. I met a friend half to. And when we join this sentence using coordinating conjunction, I went to Macho. And I met a friend half to. Three, Sarah ate the food. Sarah did not get satisfied. When we join this sentence, Sarah ate the food, but she did not satisfied. Four, he is poor. He is honest. When we join this sentence, he is poor, but he is honest. Number five. You can read the book. You can read the fiction. When we join this sentence, it becomes you can read the book or you can read the fiction. Number six, Berha went to the market. Berha went to the shop. When we join this sentences, Berha went to the market or he went to the shop. Number seven, he did not go to school. He was ill. When we join these sentences, it becomes he did not go to school because he was ill. Number eight, students study hard. There is a mid-exam next week. When we join these sentences, it becomes students study hard because there is a mid-exam next week. Okay, students, you are required to remember the following main points. One, 
when we join two complete sentences with and but or the subjects of the sentences are both written and use a comma before the conjunctions but and or two when we join two complete sentences and remove the subject of the second sentence and a comma is not used before the conjunctions okay students let's proceed to the following exercises given from the above information join the following sentences using conjunctions of but and or and because question number one he is a rich man he is not happy he is a rich man he is not happy Okay, when we join these two sentences, it becomes He is a rich man, but he is not happy. Question number two He went to college. He went to university. He went to college. He went to university. All right, when we join these two sentences, it becomes he went to college or to university. Question number three, he is a clever student. He passes all his exams. He is a clever student. He passes all his exams. When we join these two sentences, it becomes he is a clever student and he passes all his exams. This is all about today's lesson and don't forget to study your lesson at home. Till next week, bye-bye.